Well, good morning and welcome to church. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. My name is Jeremy Grenhart. I serve as music director at Christ Lutheran in Bethesda, Maryland. I'm also your host for these online services, and this is my co-host, St. Cecilia. Well, if you're an old friend, we welcome you back. It's nice to see you. And if you are new to this space, we just wanted to take a moment and let you know that you are most welcome here. Amen. And the way we begin our service is with a time of confession and forgiveness. This is when we can examine the things that happened during the week, the things that we did or left undone, uh, areas where we might have fallen short, or just general things that we want to, to bring to God and unburden ourselves. That's different for everyone, so we take a moment of silence uh, to do that right now. And as we come back together, I can let you know that all of your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing Sanctuary together. to the Word. And we're going to have Dilip read Psalm 100 for us and then receive a message from Pastor Graham. A reading from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into His presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is He that made us and we are His. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Hi, my name is Richard Graham. And I'm a Lutheran pastor who is proud and happy to be able to assist in the worship services at Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church in Bethesda, Maryland. Let us pray. 
God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessing of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. That's the prayer of the day for today. Today being the, the Sunday after the celebration of the Festival of the Holy Trinity. We are now in the Pentecost season, hence the green. Also, hence the scripture lesson that I'm going to read from the Gospel according to Matthew. For most of the rest of the year now, we're going to read about Jesus and his adventures and his ministry and his service following the teaching of St. Matthew, the first gospel. So today we pick up at the end of the ninth chapter of St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You have received without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It says, When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and also welcome. As you have heard already, this worship service is produced by Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church in Bethesda, Maryland, and shared with lots of people. If you are a member or a friend of Christ Church, I want to begin by saying thank you. Thank you because it's your prayer and your financial generosity that makes this worship service possible. And if you are someone who is with us because you got a link from a friend or a member of the congregation. You are also very welcome. On the page that you opened to get to this service, there's information about how you could get in touch with us during the week. Send us a note, ask for more information, just say hello. We would be glad to hear from you. You are very welcome here. And if you have, so to speak, just stumbled on us, maybe while you were looking for something else, you are also welcome here. We believe that in the work of God, there are no mistakes. And we pray that, that this service will be a blessing for you. Your presence is surely a blessing for us. Welcome, everybody. The gospel lesson that's appointed for this particular time is, is very appropriate for us. It's powerfully appropriate for us, in fact, because it's about crowds. Jesus has been out in the countryside teaching and healing, and he's begun to draw crowds. And haven't crowds been on our minds too lately? 
seemed for a long time as though much of the world around us was empty. The streets of the cities we knew were, were, were vacant, little was going on. The streets, the, the pictures of the streets of Manhattan were, were eerie and quiet. Times Square, empty, looked very strange. It was as if, as if the, the world we knew was deserted. And then all of a sudden, there got to be crowds, big crowds. Crowds of, of people protesting, calling attention to, to things they thought needed to be addressed, doing that peacefully for the most part, but not always. And of course, the powers that be have to pay attention to crowds, to manage them, and they do that mostly with care and respect, but not always. Those of us who live around Washington, D.C. here are used to crowds. It's a wonderful thing, for instance, to go downtown on the 4th of July and to be part of that huge crowd that sits around the concert on Capitol Hill and then watches the fireworks. Just wonderful to be with all those people. But then the event gets over and all those people start to stream for the metro in the dark. And I know I am not the only person who finds that kind of crowd a little unnerving. We're also in Washington used to crowds of protest. We're used to crowds in which some people are, are, are pushing for things they think need to be changed or need to be addressed. We're well aware that in crowds like that, some people are very angry and we're well aware that the crowds themselves are often much larger than anyone had planned for. It's easy to get lost in that kind of crowd. It's easy to begin to feel a collective energy that can kind of take on a life of its own. In the course of the history of our country, much good has been done by those crowds, those large crowds of protest. And also in the course of our history, some very evil things have been done that way too. Anyway, Jesus watches the crowds that have begun to gather around him and he has compassion on them, it says, because they, they are harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And that seems to me to be a pretty accurate description, not just of crowds these days, but of the human condition. Lots of us feel harassed and helpless. The world looks like it's looking for a shepherd. Although many of the people who offer to be our shepherd seem to have their own interests at heart and not ours. We're in crowds whether we know it or not. We're swept along by currents of, of history and culture. We're, we're involved with the life of the whole world around us, whether we know it or not, whether we always realize it or not. The crowds in which we find ourselves are confused and noisy. And we are well aware that especially in this day, the crowds around us are full of people who are frustrated and distressed. Some of them very angry, some of them with legitimate grievance some of them feeling as though they have nothing to lose. It's bad when a crowd feels as though the people who make it up have nothing to lose. Jesus looks at this crowd and Jesus is the shepherd. Jesus is the shepherd of that crowd around him. He is the shepherd of all. He is the good shepherd. We talk about this all the time. Jesus is our shepherd. I preached about this just a couple of weeks ago. But in the lesson for the day, today, Jesus does something that's very interesting and a little different. Jesus, the good shepherd, appoints deputy shepherds. He appoints assistant shepherds, sub-shepherds, if you will. He appoints people to go and do what he does. And St. Matthew in the Gospel tells us who these people are. Simon and Andrew, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, another James, Thaddeus, another Simon, Judas. Jesus entrusts his work to these very human individuals. They're to do what he does and to speak the message that he speaks. It's as if to care for the crowds, Jesus starts another crowd. It's a small crowd at first. It's fallible, it's made of people who have their problems. One of the members of Jesus' first small crowd, after all, is the one who betrays him to the Romans. But Jesus sends this little crowd out to do what he does. 
And after Jesus' death and resurrection, this crowd becomes the church, the very body of Jesus Christ in the world. The crowd that Jesus starts is not immune to pain and confusion in the world, but the church knows whose it is and in the mess of the world where its true allegiance lies. The church trusts that for its failures and its its weaknesses, there is forgiveness. The church trusts that for its, its, its smallest triumphs, there is joy among the angels in heaven. And we are part of this church of Jesus Christ. We are baptized into this crowd of witnesses. We're not part of a club that was organized for our enjoyment and our satisfaction. We're part of a movement, a holy crowd, and we've been seeded into the world like yeast is seeded into bread dough to produce a kind of holy ferment that that makes the whole thing work, that shows God's love for creation. We are meant to be signs of God's love for this creation and God's love for every person in it. The way we serve God varies depending on our strengths and our abilities and our talents and what we like to do. Some people these days, some church people are out in the street and the crowds protesting. And some people, church people, are working in law enforcement to manage the protests and to protect everybody. Some people in in the present situation, church people are working in public service under great difficulties sometimes these days, trying to make things better for all of us. Some, Some church people these days are getting on with the business of family life and work life under tremendous difficulties and great stress, Lord knows. And some people, church people, maybe the hardest working people, devote themselves to prayer day and night. We are all called into the service of this world because we are called into the service of God who loves this world so much. We're gathered up, we're collected, and we're sent, instructed to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God, as the prophet Micah put it so very long ago. The crowds today, the crowds we see around us, are often just like the crowds Jesus saw, harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And sometimes, dear friends, we feel like that ourselves. But we have been baptized into a different kind of crowd. And scattered as we sometimes are, we are united in our shepherd Lord who shared our death so that at the last we can share his glory. May God bless us all this week and use our lives for good. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, now and forever and forever. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Graham. We always appreciate you. Well, let's sing together one more time. We'll do uh, By Grace We Have Been Saved, amen. Uh, And then let's move into a time of prayer together.
Christ died for us, we gain by God's own laws. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. We know the wage of sin is that Thank God we shall revive. For just as Jesus rose again, Church. My name is Taylor Lee. I'm one of the music worship leaders here at Christ Evangelical Church and I invite you into this time for our prayers of the people. As we go into this time for the prayers of the people, we take a moment to come to you, Lord, in prayer and center our hearts and minds on the things that we need to bring to you. Lord, be with us in this time and place as we share our hearts with you. We also invite that anyone who may have any prayers that you would love to hear added to submit them down below in the comment box on this page or also email them to us. We also hope to have um, more words that reflect us as a church family in the hope that we can connect more meaningfully to God. For our world, our world is going through so much transition. We are going into a new normal in our work and our play, while dining out or shopping, and in travel situations. It can feel also overwhelming, but we're grateful for your unchanging love and mercy over our lives. We pray that these transitions be for the better of our world, but also remind us to continue to act, for our tomorrow might be better than our yesterday. For your holy word and spirit, help us to be better neighbors, better family members, and better Christians in a changing world. We pray for those who's vo- in the world whose voices go unheard. Your word tells us that the meek shall inherit the earth. However, it can be difficult to visualize your promise in this world. We pray for leadership at every level, inside and outside the church. We pray that they are more aware of the less fortunate the marginalized, the gentle. Let them be diplomatic as well as selfless with the goal that those whom are unheard might have more of your promise for the heavenly kingdom here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Lord, please hear our prayer. for the ways in which you protect us from harm. There are laws, organizations, and leaders whom are meant to be the checks and balances of our society, but we know that sometimes those human-created protections fall short, and we fall short when we either can't hear our neighbor's voice or encourage violence. Both are expressions of sin. It's hard to even know what to do or pray right now, but your word tells us not to fear for Emmanuel. I am here with you. You are our great protector, Lord, and we thank you for covering us with your love and mercy every day. We are currently in a time of elections. I know that some of you have either witnessed or waited in those absurdly long lines to vote. But be encouraged, people of God. Sometimes using your voice to make a difference might seem insignificant or inconvenient at times. But we pray that you understand how important your voting voice is. We pray that you understand how important your point of view is. We pray to use our voices in whatever manner. 
video, writing, voting, to be the change that we want to see. Jesus was in the desert for 40 days, tempted by the devil to give up. Let us channel the inner strength of Jesus to also not give up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. life on earth was full of messages, courageous acts, and inspiration. His life's work encourages us to carry his message of hope to others. Lord, give us the tools in your will to continue this work, whether virtual or in person. Connect your living word to our everyday lives. We ask for your guidance as we continue when and how to come back together physically. Make new ways for us that we might both be safe and together. We are blessed to have the means to connect with each other through this virtual worship experience. We thank you for our readers, Dilla, Pastor Graham for that amazing message, uh, our organizers, editors, musicians, those who share our service each week with family and friends, and all those who put forth a labor of love to bring our worship experience to more homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. of Judy Holtz, who passed this week. May his goodness and mercy be with her in the eternal kingdom. We also take a moment to care and to hold anyone who is struggling with loss. We pray for those who are going through a time of transition. As you move from season to season, may we pray that you will hold to God's unchanging hand. We pray for those fighting illness to be healed in Jesus' name. We now take this moment to open this space for any prayers that you might have aloud or silently up to God. for all of these things as well as the silent meditations that hang of our heart and we lay them at the foot of the cross and we pray in the words that Jesus taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Let the church say, Amen. Thanks, Taylor. Well, please do be in touch with us if you have a prayer request. Uh, just shoot us an email or pop something in the comments below, and that way we know how to be praying for you during the week. Uh, and also feel free to share this service uh, e either on social media or you can just forward the link that you received this morning. Amen. Let's sing together one more time.
please receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you.